expensive. The land is too expensive. It's, it's, it's one of those things, you know. So you can never be together. Whereas in Europe and so on, there's no such thing anymore. The high bracket and low bracket, they're all almost egalitarian society. They are middle class, most of them. No longer like before. And therefore, they can live in the city, in a way, although the apartment may be small. And this is how you can stop this unnecessary travel from one workplace to recreational place. This is the theory, that simple triangle of planning, where you, your home, where you work, and where you play. That's three triangles. And if you can bring it together as closely as possible, then you don't need those kind of people anymore. But we just can't at the moment. And the developers, or like I said, is commercially driven, and they don't allow, not allow, they don't make provisions <coughs> for for poor apartments, you know, for affordable apartments. Affordable apartments. <laughs> and this is our dilemma in many ways. Yeah, when you uh, mentioned just now about the cars and vehicular access, the impressions perhaps uh, that was given as if uh, it's like a, a set thing. I mean, as long as you have the cars, cities will probably have to be like this. Yes. But uh, when we had a talk uh, by the ambassador of Poland, uh, when we had our exhibition, he gave a speech and said that after the uh, city, I forgot which city was in Poland, uh, was raised by the uh, uh, World War II bombing bombs and they had to, to, to uh, revitalize or, or, or reconstruct the city. He said the statement. He said, we decided uh, then to redo the city but give the spaces back to the people. Now, he said that and that statement is a political statement when he said that. He said, give the places back to the people. Uh, that is a, in opposition to the view that the idea that uh, as long as you have cars, therefore you're going to have a certain kind of city. So it suggests that it's still within the will of the uh, of the people in sense of political will that we could actually have a different kind of city, in a city living with parks and things that are working. It's a matter of uh, but when we talk about cities and, and you mentioned just now land prices this and that, and the cars. It, it, it shows that as, as if the Dr. Banda said, what to do? You know, but actually, the ambassador of Poland said, no, this is, it, it's a matter of you wanting to, to have it. So is it a human thing? Or is it a technological or vehicular thing? This is, this is the question. No, it's a question of political thing. Yes. It is, in a way, as I said, if you want a city with uh, commercial, entity in it, you know, commercially driven, you can't get this. But because it's it amenities which is costly, and we must have it, but who is to, to do this? It is, of course, the government. The government should pay for this, for the community. Not, you know, or otherwise they should, in some way, uh, devise a control, a planning control. But the, the control at the moment are different thing altogether. Again, you know, how could you do that? How could you ask a developer to allow for 10 acres of open place, open space? They just would not do it. They said, no, I don't want to do it, if you ask me. It is for the government then to say that we'll buy it for the purpose of the people. <coughs> Unless you do that, nobody's going to do that. This is what <coughs> is happening today. Uh, the government simply throws all this regulation to the developers. And the developers just looking that you know the, the bottom line is always the profitability. And therefore you do, you won't get the best of the people for the community. Unless you say uh, even the, not as much as now but before. Any development of housing development, for example, you have to do uh, low cost housing. You must, about 30%. But is that the work of the commercial people or of, of the developer to do that? Isn't that the work of the government to do that? Even Singapore government don't do that. They pay for it. 
poor the poor people. And now you force people to do it, they just won't do it. And now they erase that, they do something else, you know. But still, you know, you've got to provide school and so on. School, in here, they ask developer to pay for it. Good developer just will not do it. They dump everything. They dump the everything to the responsible. This is the responsibility of the government. If they want a good community, or if they want a good whatever township we're planning for the future, or for the people for that matter, you can't run away from that. Mm -hmm. And so far, the government has been running so, away from responsibility yeah. to, to the people. Especially, the subject is coming back later, about heritage and conservatism. That's not the work of, of the developer, of the people to do that. It is the work of the government to do that. And then they say, ah, we, we put, they think that you just put regulation, it would work. It would never work. But I would go to that again on that subject. Okay, uh, so we're going to transit now into the question about the, the living city in terms of heritage and, uh, and, and the modern city to say, how do we deal with the question of heritage and the balance and things like that. But before that, perhaps uh, you want to give this thing first? This Yes, I will give this, this, this one is, question. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. You can see.